Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service here at Pataska United Methodist Church. The theme for today is Jesus as our great high priest. A few announcements before we get started. Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes are available to those who would like to fill a box on their own or as a family. Plan to return filled boxes on Sunday, October 27th. There will be a packing party on October 27th following the worship. Please turn in all donations with the Christmas tree envelopes as soon as possible. We are hosting a blood drive this Wednesday, October 16th from 12 to 5 p.m. for the Battle for Broad Street Blood Battle. Donors will be able to cast their vote for Watkins Warriors or Looking Heights Hornets. Thursday mornings from 10 to 12 will now be volunteer mornings. Everyone is welcome and there will be many ways to volunteer, including the sit-down tasks. Then Hoover Financial is hosting a senior scam seminar at the Potasco Library on Tuesday, October 22nd at 1 p.m. All are invited to attend. And then the office will be closed on Monday in observance of Indigenous Peoples Day. And if you, like me, and if you, like me, didn't catch all that, we have a new and improved bulletin. Many thanks to Sarah for reformatting and getting all that, and it's at the back of your bulletin. So no announcement will ever go missed. Welcome, beloved family of God. Today, as we gather, let us remember the Word of God is not just words on a page. It is living and active, piercing our hearts and bringing us closer to the one who is our high priest, Jesus. With confidence, we approach the throne of grace, knowing that we are heard. Let us open our hearts to God's presence today. And one more announcement starting this Tuesday. We are having a grief a grieving class hosted by our very own Kathy. Kathy, raise your hand. Yay. Uh, she is highly trained, and there is so much you can benefit from that class. It will start this Tuesday, October 15th at 10 a.m. at the library upstairs. So Tuesday, 10 a.m., grieving seminar. Uh, grief isn't something you get over, but something you get through. We will be hosting a group focused on moving through the grief process. The group will focus on the loss of a loved one, such as a spouse, parent, child, etc. And Kathy is bereavement coordinator for Heartland Hospice. She has worked in hospice for 15 plus years as both a social worker and a bereavement coordinator. So thank you, Kathy, for hosting this. Uh, they will go uh, through November, till November. So please. Please tell friends and family to come to that Tuesday at 10 a.m. Also, your pastor will be a little busy this week. So if you communicate to me and it's a longer response time than normal, give me some grace, please, because it is a busy week this week. Got a lot going on. That being said, let us center our thoughts. Our centering thought is admittedly a longer quote by Amy Peeler, but I think it summarizes the theme of our service well. She says, The mighty high priest who stands before the face of God is at the same time the high priest who can completely understand our weaknesses. If we are nervous or ashamed at the prospect of our hearts being laid bare before God, we now hear that one who is God's own son understands their weaknesses. His level of understanding, moreover, is not simply academic. He experiences the difficulties that weakness brings because he too has experienced temptation and testing in all ways as they have.
if able, for our call to worship. God, God has called all God's people to lives of hope and service. We want to serve God, but sometimes life gets too be too good a people for us. Place your trust in God's power and love. God understands our needs, our sorrows, and our joys. Come, let us worship God who is always with us always. Praise God for God's eternal presence. Amen. Will you join us in our opening hymn, number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. as we face the challenges and disappointments of life. When our hearts are hard and our concern is only for ourselves, turn us back to you. Remind us of your saving love and keep us close to you, Lord. Love us as only you can love. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And at this time, will the children please come forward with our children's message? That hymn was a callback from last week. That's beautiful. Hi. Hi. You know, the words was, here I raise my Ebenezer. Does anyone know what that's referring to? An Ebenezer is a sword. So, not talking about Ebenezer Scrooge, okay? All right. This morning we are talking about two things how scripture is so important and how Jesus is our high priest, our representative. That's a fancy word for Jesus stands in our place. He loves us and knows everything about us. So when, when you hurt, see I hurt my hand today or this week, I really hurt my hand or when you stub your toe or when you're in a lot of pain, Jesus knows what it's like to be in pain. So when we pray to God, God knows exactly what it's like to be in pain. And I can't think of a better illustration for this message than what you're about to give me. So let's see. All right. Is it, is it a pencil? It's a pencil. All right. 
Wow, I should have done this earlier in the message because now I'm stuck. Um, well, <laughs> ah, here we go. So I don't know about you, but for me, I make a lot of mistakes, like a pencil. And the beautiful thing about a pencil, I use a pencil in school all the time because what can you do with a pencil that you can't do with a pen? You can erase. You can erase, yeah. And Jesus, uh, when, we, when we have sinned, and when we've done bad things, what does Jesus do? What did Jesus do? He erased all of our sins. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember one time I did homework for first grade and I did the wrong assignment. So I did the entire math book, but it was the wrong chapter. I did the whole chapter, all the questions, but it was the wrong one. And so I had to erase the whole thing. And, you know, there was a lot of scuff marks and the paper, I had to get new paper because it was all nasty. But Jesus, when he erased all of our sins, it doesn't look like that, does it? It's completely clean. It's completely clean. So, Jesus died for every one of our sins. That's the best I got. Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Who would like to take it next week? I don't know. Which one of you had it last? Do you remember? Uh, no idea either. Well, I don't know. I'll give it to you. There we go. All right. Hey, hey. Don't go. We need to pray. <laughs> so repeat after me. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Help me, to be kind to Help me to be kind to others. And to follow you every day. Keep me close to you. Help me share your love with everyone. With everyone. Good. Okay, and we're going to say amen on three. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. Thank you all. You may go back to your seats. Almighty God, we come before you, recognizing the power of your word that speaks to our hearts. We are grateful for the ways you've spoken to us throughout history and continue to speak today. Help us to be attentive to your word and to live it out in our daily lives. Lord, we lift up the needs of this congregation, for you know them well. You know each and every one of us. For those who are struggling with illness, we pray for your healing touch. For those carrying heavy burdens, grant them the peace that only you can provide. We ask for your wisdom and guidance for all our leaders, our community, and the world in which we live. Jesus, our great high priest, we thank you that you understand our struggles 
and intercede for us. As we come to you, we do so with confidence, knowing that you provide mercy and grace in our time of need. Fill us with your spirit and help us to walk in your ways this week. Hear us as we pray as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just as we approach God with confidence to receive God's grace, let us now approach this time of giving with open hearts, knowing that everything we have come, everything that we have comes from God. Our gifts are a response to God's abundant love and provision.
be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the many blessings you have poured into our lives. As we offer back a portion of what you have given us, we ask that you would give, use these gifts for your kingdom's work. May they be multiplied for your glory and for the help of those in need. Amen.
Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold form firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, of course, can't use an illustration or a prop. If it talks about the sword, I have to use a sword. Uh, talking about how the sword is double edged. The scripture is like a sword, double edged that cuts even flesh and spirit. A sword is to be used with precision, and a, a long sword or a double-edged sword like this one could bend and be used. Now, the thing with a sword is you have to be careful with it, right? You can't just throw it around, because someone will get hurt. You have to be careful on how you use it. Be precise in its application. It takes a lot of training. A lot of practice on your own time. A lot of practice from studying with other people who use different kinds of swords and different techniques. Our passage tells us that scripture is like a sword. The word of God cuts through the surface and reaches the depths of our hearts. It exposes and removes spiritual diseases such as sin, arrogance, ingratitude, and wrong motives. God's Word is not just words on a page, ink on a page. It's not just information, but it's rather transformation. It heals us, though sometimes the process is uncomfortable. And so the key point today is this. Train with the Word, cling to the priest. And it's based on the two commands. Paul gives us two, Hebrews gives us two commands. Verse 14, hold fast to the faith. It's a command for us. It's not optional. Hold fast to the faith. And verse 16, draw near to the throne. And so I take it, train with the word, cling to the priest. My dad used to just model what it was uh, to be a person of the Word. We as Christians are often known by other religions as people of the book. We are people of the book. And my dad, he would call his scripture, his, his Bible, his sword. You know, let me get my sword out. And every day he would have it on his table. He would do his scripture reading in the morning. You could tell because the page would be turned and the Bible would be open on our table every day. So when we'd wake up after him, he'd wake up very early in the morning. He did four tens. He was up very early. And so when we would get up, we would see he did his study already. It was right on the table where he left it. Indeed, part of my job is to be minister of the word, order, sacrament, and service. The word. I'm called to be a minister of the word, studying it and learning from it. I've read hundreds of books in my life, and there's only one book that reads you as you read it. Martin Luther himself would read the Bible twice a year, and he would say, every uh, two times out of the year, I pick fruit from every branch of the tree that God has. I do it once a year, and you too as well can read Scripture throughout the entire year. And if you're interested in reading the Bible in a year, it's the same plan I use. It's on the Northex. Maybe you're considering starting New Year's. That's your resolution. Maybe you want to start today. Either way, have at it. 
and there will also be an email sent to you. If you're on our email list, it'll come out at noon today. So there's so much you can get from Scripture. My grandmother, before she passed, she would always say, how can a preacher preach so many sermons? And I remember telling her, Grandma, it's a big book. <laughs> and there's a lot in life. There's a lot of things that happen in life. Sometimes the beauty of a Bible study is we take a verse and we apply it to our lives in different ways. It's the same truth, but it, it applies to us in different ways. It's a big book. I remember preaching sermons and people were saying, Pastor Carl, did you just like wiretap my phone? As if that sermon was meant just for them. And of course, if, if a sermon is based on the word, it will apply to every season of your life. The truth applies to your life no matter what. If there's ever a message that speaks directly to you, I didn't wiretap your phones. Someone higher up on the corporate ladder has a message for you. We're told that scripture cuts through flesh and spirit. I understand that to mean it affects how we live. It affects how we think. It affects our outlook on life. I also see it as it's a perfect highlight of body and soul. Sometimes we overemphasize the soul and we see ourselves basically as special animals. Or we overemphasize, or excuse me, overemphasize the flesh and we see ourselves as basically just animals. Fancy animals. Or the opposite end, we emphasize the soul and we see ourselves as just merely spiritual beings who can do whatever we want and make things up for ourselves. The Eastern Orthodox, one thing I learned from them is they don't split body and soul as much as we do in the West. They see both body and soul mended together. And the more we the more Western science learns, the more we start catching up to what they already believe. You know, if you experience trauma or hardship earlier in life, it stays with you psychologically and physically because there, there isn't as much of a separation in uh, the body and the soul. They're, they're together in some way. I don't understand it fully. But it affects how we think. Scripture affects how we think. It's been tested. It's been condensed. It's been distilled. I can get more instruction from reading one chapter of Scripture than reading an entire book. It is the most quoted and most published book in human history. And so, Scripture is so important for us. Uh, it says in, uh, in our book of discipline that uh, Scripture contains all things necessary unto salvation. So it's important to read. It's a pretty good book to read. And there are different genres, different authors, but all of it is for us. It's as if when you read a different book, you're looking at a different diamond, a different side of the diamond. So, the second thing, verse 13. Nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. Luther, once again, would say, we live our lives quorum Deu, Latin for in the face of God. We live our lives in the face of God. And that's why I have it in binoculars up there. Uh, because God sees all. God knows nothing is hidden. Sometimes we like to think we're Adam and Eve and we can hide from God. No one's going to notice. Having a mother taught me one thing. You can't get away with it. <laughs> Someone will find out. Nothing is hidden. And my dad would often say, our character is what we do when no one is looking. And that's why we need a community to come together, to build each other's character. I've learned so much from you, not because you telling me what to do, but because just looking at how you see the world, looking at your actions, looking at your understanding, and learning from your gifts and wealth of knowledge. We need community to build our character that way, when we are alone, we are strong. Indeed, Scripture contains so much truth. Humans are the only species that we know that can self-reflect. 
that can actually self-reflect on ourselves. But the problem is, if that's all we do, it gets unhealthy. Sometimes we just need to do good. Just, just do good. If you're, if you're focused inward too much, the best remedy is to just do good. Follow the Word. Train with the Word. Do good and live it out. And then later it will be course corrected. It is a common predictor, current studies suggest, that the more I sentences used, the more I talk about me and I and I, the more I sentences a person uses, the more likely they struggle with depression. And the same is true with the big church. The big church. Posts that criticize a church are a dime a dozen, but ones which seem positive seem fake. Because we've been trained to believe only negative things are true and compliments are propaganda and flattery. We live in such a world where the negative things, the negative stuff, that has to be true. But if someone says anything positive, that, that must be fake. Someone must be putting on a show or an act. Beloved, we live in a time where it's hard to find truth. And as uh, Churchill, I think, said, you know, truth is often surrounded by a bodyguard of lies. We need something consistent, something to help us. We need to practice and train with the word. Because it has been tested, it has been used, it's been the basis of so many good things. It has changed and transformed so many. I could spend the rest of the day sharing stories of how it's transformed people's lives. And it is an honor as a minister to see it literally change people. Nicholas Eames, I read it this week, and it, this quote is so good. Lies are like donuts. If you're in for one, you're in for a dozen. <laughs> and when it comes to the truth, sometimes we're uncomfortable with the truth. Sometimes when I go to God, <laughs> God, I don't want to give you this sin. I don't want to confess this sin to you. Or when I make a mistake, Lord, I don't want to give this to you. And then so we begin to lie and justify ourselves, come up with excuses, come up with ways to justify our own mistakes. But beloved, it is so much better to just tell the truth. Hey, I messed up and I know I have a high priest who knows what I'm going through and who has forgiven my sins. We have a priest who isn't out there in the ether, who isn't just spun the clock and stepped back. Uh, Jesus knows what it's like to be human. And so the question is, what do we cling to? <laughs> A glove, in case, you didn't, in case you missed it. What do we cling to? Sometimes we need, well, we always need to cling to Jesus. And during the hardest times of life, that's when you find out what you really cling to. That's when you discover this is what I hold on to the most. When we are faced with fears, stress, crisis, when new things happen, where do our thoughts immediately go? What do we immediately turn to? Do you, do you think, I'm done, that's it, I'm done, I'm out, peace, I surrender, see ya, we're all doomed, it's over, white flag, I give up. Or maybe you look for distractions. Whenever you're stressed, you say, I I'm going to look, I'm just going to watch TV. I'm going to scroll on the internet. There's a, a new uh, saying called doom scrolling, where you just avoid the world and you just scroll, 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 scroll. You just avoid the world. Do you go to substance or food use? What do you cling to? What do you cling to for comfort? Maybe you try to find false hope and self-identity with your personality or, or your health or your intellect. The problem with all these things is they can disappear. The problem with surrendering is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> it doesn't honor God who is victorious. Whenever we say, oh, I give up, <laughs> I surrender. There's no hope. We're done. We're done. There's no hope for humanity. Why bother? God is victorious. Jesus is victorious. And remember how He became victorious? Through the cross. When everybody thought He lost. Beloved, if we truly believe that God is good, if we truly believe that God made us, that means, beloved, we will be called to do good in the most difficult of times. John of the Cross called it the dark night of the soul. Maybe you've experienced the dark night of the soul. 
when it's like everything is terrible, nothing is good, God has forgotten me and abandoned me, nobody cares, anytime someone encourages me, it's actually uh, a discouragement. You know, just everything is horrible. Beloved, you're not alone. You're not the only one who's faced that. Hopefully that's encouraging. And the scripture calls us to cling to Jesus, our high priest. You may have a pity party. I know I do. And maybe that's comfortable and soothing for a second. But don't stay in the pity party. Because at a pity party, only one person is invited. And the more you get, the even pitier it becomes. Even, even, oh boy, here we go. Even melodramatic pessimism becomes a vice. Where, oh man, it's just good to say we give up, everything's terrible. But what does the scripture tell us? Verse 14, hold on to faith. Hold on, hold on. Cling to Jesus. Cling to Jesus. Uh, my father gave Heather a clinging, a clinging cross. That's why it's important at the end of the service. I hold on to the cross. Cling to the cross when times get difficult. I'm so thankful Heather broke her hand so I could use her brace for an illustration. That's why she did it. Uh, she's not here today, so I can pick on her. But Jesus has empathy for our weakness. Sometimes we are not gracious with ourselves. Our faults, our mistakes are just temporary. It's just a stepping stone, a milestone. It doesn't define who we are. Beloved, if God has forgiven us, we too must forgive other people. Sometimes it is a lot easier. I, I heard a, some people tell me, yeah, you know what, Pastor Carl, last week you were right. It is a lot easier to forgive other people than it is to forgive ourselves. And we need to remember, Jesus knows what it's like to be human. Though he has never sinned, Jesus has forgiven sinners. A medical brace reminds us that we are frail. And a brace supports injured or weak parts of the body, just like Jesus strengthens us and supports us in our weakness. A medical brace provides support to a weak or injured part of the body, helping it function until it can heal. Scripture says in the same way, Jesus understands our weakness. He experienced human frailty. He gives us strength when we are weak and unable to stand on our own. And so when we go to God, we don't have to hide our struggles. Instead, we can lean on Jesus, knowing he's been through it and offer, and offer support and grace. Beloved, when we go through times of suffering, we know he holds tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow may hold. But as Phil's saying, we know who holds tomorrow. And we know who holds our hand. Beloved, the human heart longs for a priest. Verse 15, we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way. The human heart longs for a priest. Someone who gets us. Someone who defends us. Someone who represents us before God and makes things right. And it may be tempting to look to other people to be our high priest. Oh, wow, Pastor Carl looks really sharp today. He must represent us before God. Oh, this person is really amazing. That person must represent us before God. Beloved, as John Calvin once said, the human heart is a factory of idols. It is always tempting throughout all humankind to put someone in God's place in our hearts. It's very easy and very tempting to put someone on the throne of our hearts instead of Jesus. As I typed this sentence in the sermon preparation, I received an ad, basically someone trying to get your trust. Beloved, our citizenship is in heaven, first and foremost. We need to be reminded, especially in this time of division, negativity, our citizenship 
is in heaven. We are children of God, first and foremost. No matter what happens, no matter what the future may hold, we know who holds the future. Beloved, Jesus is our high priest. And Jesus is our answer. What happens here, though important, is not what determines our identity. Jesus had a threefold ministry, prophet, priest, and king. Jesus is our prophet. He knows our future. He knows all things. Jesus is our king. He's the leader of our life and leader of everything. And Jesus is our priest. He represents us before God. He's the one who stands in our place and knows everything about us. So, beloved, may we avoid the temptation to think, this person will solve it all. This person who is in Jesus will solve all our problems. If we just confess it all, or talk about it all, or just trust this person, this person will do it all. Beloved, Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our king. Jesus is our prophet. And then last but not least, verse 16, let us approach the throne of God of grace with confidence. Thomas Watson once put it this way, Christ went more willingly to the cross than we do to the throne of grace. And Jesus, as it says in another part of Hebrews, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. He went there out of love for you. Beloved, may we go to the throne of grace in prayer. The children's message was actually kind of perfect because what happened when the treasure chest was given to the child? He went off. Isn't that so true in our own hearts? Anytime, oh, God gave me something that I really prayed for and wanted, see ya. (laughs) Beloved, we cannot forget prayer. More prayer, as the bishop said, more prayer, more power. No prayer, no power. We need to be a people of prayer. Not just people of the book, but also people of prayer. Train with the word, cling to the priest. Prayer looks different depending on who you are. Some, for me, if I'm struggling with sleeping, prayer helps me go to bed. There's nothing, I, I truly believe prayer can be helpful if you're struggling with sleeping. It is, what can be more comforting than putting your life in God's hands that comforts me to sleep? I pray while exercising. I pray while shouting sometimes. When you're stressed, pray. When you're alone, pray. May we be willing to approach the throne of God's grace. So this morning, let us train with the word and cling to the priest. Amen. Our closing hymn uh, will have a different melody, but if you're like me, you won't even notice. So let's stand if we are able and sing number 399. The words are on the screen.
You have been made free by the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go into the world to serve God by helping others. Be at peace and bring God's peace and love with you wherever you go. Amen.